All right, everyone. Hello, and welcome back to uh, Bridging the Gap. Um, and so, in this episode today, we're going to be reviewing a game I found on KGS. This is a nine by nine game uh, between a thirty Q and a twenty one Q. Uh, so, hopefully, we'll be able to pick up some tips and tricks to help us out in our own games. So, first of all, I want to talk a little bit about um, a quick checklist that I think will be really useful for beginner players when playing and reviewing their own games. I mean, so when you play your games, uh, I think you should ask, first of all, what what do I want to do? What is um, my strategy that I'm trying to employ over these next few moves? Uh, and then you can start thinking about what moves you can use to achieve that result. So if we're looking at, you know, maybe some common openings, you might think, okay, I'm trying to take points in the corner. Um, and then I'm trying to take points in the side here or you know, I want to separate these two stones. So think of that first and then think about what you can play to achieve those ends. And then in review, I think it's really helpful to look kind of backwards um, at that process. And so you can first ask for a series of moves. Did I get what I wanted here? Um, did I achieve the result that I set out to get? Um, and sometimes the answer may be Yes, uh, and sometimes the answer might be no, like something died or I really messed up here, and then you can look a little deeper into that sequence. Um, and then even if you got what you wanted, you can then ask, was that a good idea? Was my strategy a good one here? Um, and this might be a little harder to self-review, and I think this is where it's really helpful to look at your games with a stronger player or by reading books sometimes you can get ideas of strategies. Um, and so that's something to look out for. Okay, um, so because it's a 9x9 board, I don't think there is a lot of grand strategy going on. And so really, uh, we're going to kind of follow the same ideas, but we won't be able to look at, you know, super the big picture uh, in this game. So we'll be looking primarily at blunders, things like missed Atari's, uh, clearly wrong or less than useful moves. And then uh, we'll also look a little bit at uh, if there were any bigger, better ideas on the board uh, for certain moves. And we'll see a little bit of that later on. So let's jump right into it. So these guys start out like this. Um, this bump is fine, I guess. I don't play a lot of 9x9, so I, I don't think I'm really qualified to say. Um, Hane is okay. You can see white here saying, okay, I want this corner area right here. Um, and so white plays the Hane and tries to take it. Okay, that's fair. Black connects. Uh, this is okay. Remember that there are more efficient ways to connect your stones. You know, we can look at this one. These stones are still connected, and black is making headway into the center. Uh, but black plays this one. White pushes. Black honeys is good. And then this uh, is the first kind of big mistake I want to talk about. And so, first of all, you know, we can look at our review checklist. Uh, did Black get what he wanted in the next series of moves? Uh, it doesn't look like it, because I'm assuming what Black wanted with this move is he's saying, I want to live in the corner. But that's not really possible. There's not a lot of space here, uh, and there's not a lot of forcing moves that Black can use to get the stones he needs and make two eyes in the corner. And so it's hard to say this is... Um, a good move, both from the perspective of the outcome that Black gets, and also from the idea point. Uh, I think it's a much better move for Black simply to push like this. And if White responds, uh, Black can do other things. Black can play here. Um, Black can play here. You know, maybe Black can even try to push one more time. So there are a lot of other things on the board, but this. Uh, you know, his stones aren't connected. This is a knight's move formation, but white already has stones cutting. I mean, on top of that, it's white's move, so white just simply plays forward. And I think this is a great move. You're just separating black. And now black, the stone that they played, looks a little yes, less than useful, um, just floating up there in the corner by itself. Okay. So here's uh, another tactical blunder. Black tries to play a ladder, but we can see it's not a ladder, and Black realizes that too, because White already has open liberties. Um, so this is basically voluntarily playing a loose ladder, 
and you can see that their weakness is everywhere you know white can play here white can play here um, all of these moves just doesn't do very good things to black uh, and so black is really stretched thin a white takes this one I think this is um, not the best move here but it's okay um, I think this one's better Okay, uh, black plays this one again, and so this is again a tactical error. Uh, let's take time to read why. Um, it should be fairly obvious. White plays here, or black plays here, and white can simply still just cut, um, and there's not much that black can do. You can take, uh, this still isn't alive, remember this is a false side, and so white can maybe play this one. Although I think this one gets a little, little more messy. Um, let's see, what does white play? Uh, white takes that one. That's, that's okay, I guess. My worry now is if black, you know, connects out here. Um, this is starting to look kind of good for black, actually, all throughout the lower left. Um, so white would have to play something like this, um, and then. It's an even-ish game. Hmm. Still looking pretty good for white. Uh, Black's just, he's stretched too thin. Um, a lot of his stones haven't been very useful, uh, simply put. And so you can see clearly, you know, all of white stones here are capturing this corner. Um, white stone here isn't doing much now, but it's looking at, again, taking points on the side. Uh, these two white stones are taking points in the corner. Remember that this black stone is dead. Um, in contrast, black stones, they're really thin, and all of them are kind of bunched up here up top next to white, and so it's hard to do anything useful with them. You know, how is black going to make points with these stones? It's it's a little hard to say. Okay, black plays here, kind of a weird move. Um, white does have to respond. And now black plays something really weird here. Black descends down. Um, and so, again, this is a mistake, right? You can read one or two moves ahead and see... Okay, black plays here. White can just Atari <laughs> from any direction. Let's say white picks this one. You know, black can't get it out. So really simple reading exercise. Here, again, recognizing that black should see that and decide to play somewhere else. You know, maybe play this one, um, play this one. Um, I think this is the next move for the next biggest move for the next several moves in the game. But this is kind of just giving white a free point without a, you know, if you don't have something special in mind. Um, whoops. Okay, white doesn't Atari, white Atari's this one. Um, not necessary, again, if white plays here, these two stones aren't going anywhere, right? We should be able to see that. It's just not enough liberties. Okay. Um, again, not necessary, black can't push, whoops. Black cannot push from here because these three stones um, have a shortage of liberties and they can't approach. Um, and certainly black can't play in here because that's no bueno. Uh, so really white should right now maybe try cutting and then play something like this. Um, but white's really nice and takes. <laughs> and so black gets the initiative again. Um, this is not a good move. Uh, first of all, if you're trying to protect protect the lower side, um, a move like this is much more efficient. You know, you can see that all these stones are pretty nicely spaced apart. Um, I don't think that white. It's hard for white to come in here right now, anyways. Um, maybe you might consider this one um, and force white to take these two black stones, and now you've sealed off points in the corner. Um, I still think this is really big because um, this threatens if white play somewhere else, you can connect here, and now it's questionable what white's going to do with their stone here. Um, in that note, even connecting here seems fine, um, it's trying to save these stones, uh, but it doesn't look like black can do that here because of this sequence. So okay, maybe not that one, but this one, um, this one seemed bigger. This you're making at most two points. Um, and this shape is really inefficient. This is what we call the empty triangle, this formation of one, two, three stones. And the reason that's inefficient is because if you take away this, um, 
these stones are still kind of doing the same thing. They're still connected. And in this case, black wouldn't play here. Black would maybe play here. Um, and so this stone isn't really doing what it wants to do. It's connecting stones that are already connected. Um, and so it's just kind of a really inefficient move. Um, an empty triangle is kind of the gold standard of bad shape, um, you know, kind of the opposite to the table shape we talked about. And so if you're making this shape, uh, it's maybe a good sign that something went wrong and you might want to see how you could have avoided that. Okay, white cuts here, that's good. Oh, black ignores. Um, that's maybe okay. So I think this is, you should protect. Um, and the reason is if white takes it, oops. if white takes it, which white does, um, first of all, it's an extra point. Second of all, you're losing any potential for a point or two in the center that you had. Third of all, your stone is in Atari again. Um, so that's, you know, another potential point or two, point or two for white. Um, so it might be better just to just to protect here. Um, again, black playing here, you're not protecting anything that was already, you know, in danger for white, really. Uh, so what if white plays in here? Um, like, okay, where does white go? <laughs> you know, there's not a lot of room here for white to maneuver and make two eyes or escape. Um, on top of that, um, Actually, yeah, no, that's pretty much the crux of it. This just isn't really doing anything. Again, this is still big. Again, this is still big. Um, this one, not really necessary. Uh, okay, so yeah, white takes, oh, black blocks again. This is, you made a string of five stones. Um, this is maybe an example of what we can call over-concentration, where, again, this is about efficiency. Your stones are all cramped in the same area. Um, and so while White's moves have gotten him or her the entire upper right corner, it looks like the entire top side because these two black stones are dead, bit of the right side because these two black stones are dead, and now it's starting to move into the center. Um, black stones have gotten him two, four, six, eight, ten, maybe, maybe ten points, not for sure. Um, that's because they're so stuck close together. Um, imagine if these were spaced out, you know, making like a smiley, Kind of shape here. Um, how much more black is getting out of these stones? Um, and so this is probably a good example of slow efficiency. You know, this isn't really black being efficient with their their plays. Okay, so white takes again. Um, that's okay. I think that's too small. That's a one point, maybe like a two point move. Uh, white playing here is big. You're, you're taking points here, and you're preventing black from getting points here. Um, I still think maybe this push is kind of big because uh, if black ignores You know suddenly you have all the way down the corner and black is losing points uh, where he should have had points um, But white takes so white takes where does black play? Ah, Yeah, again, just really inefficient. Uh, this is actually a zero point move First of all, you can see we're making the B2 bomber <laughs> shape here again. Uh, remember that this is bad shape. Um, and you can see, one way you can see that is there's just, you know, like a million empty triangles kind of incorporated into this shape. And so you have a lump of stones that are really, really not doing anything. Uh, this black stone, I would want to ask the black player, you know, what were you trying to get with this? Because it's not getting any points. You're not preventing white from getting any points. You're not protecting any stones that are in danger with this. Um, and so it's hard to call this justified on really any level. Um, this would be much better played again here or here. Um, yeah, it's just not doing anything, okay? So white takes those directly. Um, that's a reading mistake. You can see that these two black stones aren't going anywhere. Um, this is why we covered reading first, because with reading, you can see which moves are slow. Um, and that's how you can up your efficiency and make sure your moves are, you're getting the most out of them. Um, so instead of playing here, white could have played here or here um, and gotten extra points 
because this you're not doing anything with it so these two black stones can escape whoops these two black stones can't escape anywhere um, here let me show you there there um, you can just do this and so basically white just played in their own territory and you might have heard by now already that your that's a negative point move uh, because you could be making points elsewhere but you're not so white decides to capture um, and then where does black play it's ah. okay uh, black plays here this is finally kind of in the right direction but it's slow uh, black can play this one we talked about the one space jump uh, and it's maybe cuttable when they're alone but here black has this huge huge black wall to play so there's no reason for black not to play here uh, is white going to try to cut here i you know this is a ladder kind of situation um so that's not possible uh, maybe white can try to poke um so that's a different game white certainly can't come in from this side this side again you can prevent that from happening and this white zone's not going anywhere um so there's no reason black couldn't play this move which does the same thing again so that's his idea black is trying to make points on the side um and this is a move to achieve that but this move does it better okay so black plays here white yeah white plays here um and then black blocks okay so there's not a lot left in the game this is kind of end game stuff uh yes this is again um why not play this one if you want to make points on the bottom this move is getting you more than this um yeah and white gets this move i think the proper order here for black is to play this one first because if white tenekis that threatens to capture these these three stones um and so white would have to respond and then black can play here um and this is probably the maximum points that black can get out of this situation but black plays here uh, white fixes yeah this is not a good move again try to think out why for yourself you know what does it do um or what does it not do and what can make more points for black yeah white comes down um not doing anything again reading right like oops if black blocks white can't throw one here white this doesn't do anything black just connects um just not just not a move that's really worth playing um this is a mistake and this is also a mistake so reading right there's two ways to atari you should read out all the directions so if you play here you know white just connects out which is what happened in the game but if black guitar is this way you can see that it's caged in um and suddenly black has a couple extra points on the board um, and so you should not atari this way um, in the first place white should not play that move but white does and black ataris and white connects uh, black finally plays this move in the corner yes and forces white to capture good um, and then we see our last series of mistakes um, self atari um, in the first place this isn't really doing anything for black you know so there's no reason not to connect here um, but we really should avoid these mistakes. They do happen, you know, um, there are a couple famous pro game examples out there where they fail, um, the pros fail and self Atari and lose the game. So, uh, those are fun, but, uh, we should really avoid these, um, if we can't for obvious reasons. So yeah, white takes and then black self Ataris again. Um, black is offering a co here, but uh, there doesn't seem to really be a lot that black can do to fight it. There's no co-threats anywhere. Um, so the better move would not even be to play here. Play here. Stop white from making a point because uh, this is not anyone's point and this is a false side. So white's going to have to connect it no matter what. Okay. Um, and then white takes again. Sure, sure. Uh, so here's the game. Black connects again no reason to do this you're now 
This is a negative one point move. You are taking away your own points by playing in your territory for no reason at the end of the game. Yeah, white makes a point here. So black lost a point, white made a point. So this is a two point difference compared to two moves ago. Um, again, not doing anything, you know. I don't think white can come in here really. Um, so there's no reason for black to play inside. Uh, white connects, yeah, good. And then this um, is dead. And you can see still that even if black plays anywhere, so white plays this move, uh, which is fine. If black plays here, which black does, white can just keep ataring. If black tries to do something fancy, white can just take. Um, and so white just takes another move um, and saves another point here. Uh, and yes, this doesn't work. Um, white didn't even play this, maybe the reflects in a bit. You can just take, uh, you can cover here. Um, but you know, maybe it's fine, it's just at the end of the game. And then they pass and white ultra flexes and takes everything off the board. Um, black takes one last move to take away one of his own points and then the game ends. Okay, so this was, again, this is a triple, not a triple, it's a 20 plus Q game. So, you know, we're not expecting a lot, but already you can see, um, you know, there's lots of places to improve. Uh, places where, what well, one particular place of improvement for both of these players, I think, is just reading ahead one move. Um, and so the first example of that is here. You know, black can read ahead one move. That's not that hard for anyone. If black plays here, white can Atari. Um, and then you know that you know black probably shouldn't play that move. Um, oops. Uh, moving on the main line again. Uh, the self Atari here. So this is another kind of one move read. You should be able to see if black plays in. Oh, I'm in self Atari. I only have one liberty and then white can take. So that's one thing that um, black could have avoided. Mm, this move again, um, you should be able to see I only have one liberty. You know, this move isn't really doing anything for me. And then again, you can avoid that. Um, and then lastly, for this black player particularly, um, I would ask them, you know, think about efficiency with their moves. So this move, this move, this move, um, I think isn't really doing anything. And there are other places on the board that black can play to make more points for themselves, which they miss out on. So in the end, you know, white does get this right side, lower right side. White also gets this left side. And if all those concessions add up, you're probably losing the game. And then, yeah, this is, I think, the peak <laughs> of Black's inefficiency in this game being displayed. Um, the B2 bomber is not, it's a really cool piece of technology in real life, um, but we don't want them and we don't need them in Go. Okay, so that was the game. Hopefully it was helpful and um, you can find maybe examples of these in your own games and now you know what to look for. Um, I hope another thing that this might help players out on is uh, maybe giving you an idea of how to review and what to look for when you review your own games. Um, and so that's the video for today. Um, going into the next series of videos um, or the next section of the series Bridging the Gap, uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about strategy. And so next time, oops, next time I will be looking at Sente and Gote. Yeah. So which is, um, think a very founda foundational strategy and it will be very useful for you um, looking at some parts of the game um, like the end game for example um, but also is a very very key concept to have in mind um, when you're choosing variations for for reading things out in tactical situations okay that's all from me again hope this was very helpful and with that stone fly out